Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're making wood planks from chipboard. Yep, it's just plain old chipboard. So apparently it's become wood texture week on May May Made It because I've done wood cards. I did another kind of wood technique on Wednesday, but today we're making real wood planks. So let's get started. So what I have here is some thick chipboard. This chipboard was sent to me from Edith at scrapbookingwithme.com. So I'll leave a link to her store below. This is a really nice thick chipboard and I love it. I'm just using the natural color because I think it really leans well to wood. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut into strips just like we did with the paper and we're just going to cut different sizes of strips because I don't want the wood to be uniform. So I'm just going to put it in here and cut what I feel like feels like a piece of wood. Now I'm just using my rotary cutter to do this. You can use scissors, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you've got to cut it with. Um, you can even use a ruler and like an X-Acto blade if you need to. Now I'm putting down a little wax paper because we're gonna use ink and I don't want it all over my cutting surface. So if you have like a craft mat, you can use that, that'll be fine. I'm not gonna start with this big board. I'm gonna start with one of these smaller ones first. And here's what you'll use. You're gonna need some Distress Ink or any brown ink will do. I'm pretty sure this will work with anything. A lot of people have asked me that. I'm gonna use some brown ink and I'm gonna use some black ink and we won't need very much black ink, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this and very much like we did on the video with the wood grain strips for card paper, which I'll link below, by the way, we're gonna take the edge of this ink pad and we're gonna start in one spot on this, on this um, chipboard and drag down. So we're just gonna take that edge and drag. And I've, I did it like several times because I wanted that edge to be pretty dark. And the thing I've discovered about the dis, um, Distress Ink is it dries lighter. So it may be real, real dark now, but it won't be that dark when it dries. Now I'm going to come back to where that spot is, touch that ink pad and drag. And if they overlap, that's fine. We want it to look like two different pieces of wood where they kind of are meeting up just like that. So that's the first step. That's step one. I'm going to do that to all the pieces of chipboard real quick. One thing I want to like tell you is to make sure that you're doing these in different sections of the board. Like you don't want to do them in the same spot on every board. So you want to kind of move your wood places around. That's what gives you more movement or look like you have more pieces of wood. See, I'm kind of pausing at the top. I'm kind of letting some of that ink sink in and then dragging. The slower you drag, the darker. So like if I drag it slower, I'll get darker like that. But the faster, the lighter. Now that I've got these guys done, I'm only going to do these three pieces because I made a bunch extra for our project. I'm going to use a pencil eraser, just a regular pencil eraser and black ink. Now I tried doing this with brown ink and what I discovered was as this dries, this is the right color. The Distress Ink, you really can't see very well. Let me show you what I mean. If I take my eraser, this is going to be a nail head by the way, put it into just straight into that Distress Ink and then touch it down where a nail would go on my wood. You can see it for a second and then once it dries, it kind of just blends in and you don't see it as well. So you can see it there now. But after some trial and error, I decided the black was the way to go. So I'm just gonna touch that pencil eraser straight down onto my ink pad and then straight down onto my board. And you can typically get like two nails from one touch on the pad, see how I did that? And you don't mind if they look kind of broken and not like perfect circles, that's perfectly fine. Then I put these everywhere the boards meet. Like I put two nails where the boards meet because in my mind that's kind of what we would do. So you can see how I did that where those met, right? So you want to do that part um, next and then even more Distress Ink. Your hands will be so dirty after this is over with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ink pad again. By the way, this is vintage photo that I'm using. I'm going to ink the edges of the chipboard to kind of knock that back. I don't want that to be pale white and then I'm going to take this ink pad and I'm going to rough up the edges even more, almost laying the ink pad down. See how I'm getting that extra ink? I'm just kind of rocking it around the edges to get a lot more color there. Let me do the other end and show you that again. So there it is with nothing. I'm kind of laying this ink pad down and rocking it around those edges. And look how much more wood look we get. And then of course, ink all the sides. Now, for one final touch, and I think this really, really makes a difference. Again, using the edge of this ink pad, periodically I'm going to come in and just kind of make a stripe. See that little stripe? 
for me, that really adds to the wood look. And you can make long ones, dark ones, light ones. It doesn't matter. This is your wood. So you can do them like this, like this. I just think that that really adds to the look of the wood. Let me show you that all together. What do you think? I think we got a plank of wood here, guys. So now we're ready to put it into our project. Now, I wanted something for the um, powder room at my craft cottage. I wanted something for the wall and I decided to use a canvas. And what I did was I painted this canvas in a mixture of black and brown. So it's not a solid black, it kind of looks real black on the screen, but there's a little bit of brown in it. Because when I put the wood down, I'm gonna have a gap and I want that to show. So check this out. This is almost dry, it's not quite dry, but I'm really not worried about that. Here's my planks of wood, and I want this to look like a wood plaque when we finish. So I'm gonna glue these guys down, leaving the tiniest little gap between them just so it kind of looks like a wood fence if that makes sense and i'm going to move these nail heads to different places i don't want them lined up exactly because i want this to look kind of rough and rugged now if you decide you want them to be perfect or if you wanted to point the edges and make it a picket fence how cute would that be i think i'm gonna put this one here i think it'll look better so we'll put that one right there then we'll put this one here and i'm just going to pre-place them so i can decide um where they need to go before I get out my hot glue gun and glue these down. Now this one is hanging over the edge a good bit, so what I'm going to do is slide this one down kind of split the difference between them. I don't really care if they're hanging off. The idea of the canvas was really just to be something to hold them onto. You could put them onto cardboard or whatever. I just want it to look like a wood plaque. So what I'm gonna do is hot glue these kind of like this. Look how much that looks like wood. So I'm gonna put the hot glue actually onto the canvas because I can see where it needs to go. If I put it on the wood, I might get it hanging off the edge and I don't wanna do that. So some hot glue there. And stick this guy into it. The only thing I want to make sure of is that I'm lining these up on the edges so that my board doesn't kind of go crooked. I want to make sure I'm getting them the same at the top and the bottom so that they will make sense when we hang them up and it won't look like a big crooked piece. So now the wood is all glued down to the canvas. I'll show you the side. So you see how we have the chipboard and the canvas and see how it's hanging over the edge? Again, I'm not concerned about that because the canvas is really just a holding piece for it. So now we can decorate this guy. You could do any number of things to this. Can you imagine all the little decorations you could do? But so this paper line is from Graphic 45 and I've done a mini album on this book before. You can see this one. I love this pad, it's so pretty. And this has a quote from Coco Chanel and I told y'all I wanted this in my powder room. I want this to kind of be the focal point. So I'm gonna kind of mix media this. I'm gonna put this here, but it's a little too small. We need to bulk it up and bring some other things in. So I'm gonna do some paper cutting. This sheet from the paper pad has several little pictures. I'm gonna cut some of these off and see if I can use them. Um, you see I tore one, that makes me sad, but I'm gonna use the rest of them for sure. So I'm gonna cut these guys apart real quick. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one down onto this blue paper from the kit as well. What I'm trying to do is make it seem a little bit bolder. So I think by putting that blue edge around it, it'll really help. So I'm just gonna glue this directly down. What I want this to feel like is magazines laid out. You know how you fan out magazines? So I've cut out three of these pictures and I'm gonna use the other two to kind of be like magazines. So now I'm just gonna place this back in my trimmer and just trim around it so it kind of matches. So the border's about the same all the way around. So see, that'll help it pop a little more on that wood to have that bright color between kind of the wood color. I'm gonna see if I can do the same with these guys. I think this sheet, they don't have to be done completely because the way I'm gonna stack them. So I'm just not gonna waste this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down and I'll show you why it won't matter.
so the way I'm going to stack these is going to be like this so it really won't show that edge that's not perfectly matted so that's how the idea is so I'm going to do this one that I'm going to mat this one the same and put it in the back like this so the next thing I want to do is I want to put some foam tape between them look how pretty that paper is it's so pretty I only want the tops of these guys to be separate from each other so I want the bottoms to be glued together and the tops to have some dimension so I'm going to only add foam tape to the top of each of these and this will make sense once I put them all together it's just to give them a little bit of dimension so I think I'm going to put the orange one in the middle so what I mean by this is I want the bottom part to be glued flat and then the dimension to be at the top so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to release this backer paper and then I'm going to put some glue at the bottom here so that where they match up, they'll stick together. So now I'll just overlap this and stick the top down and glue the bottom down. Now let me show you what I mean. So the top has dimension between the two and the bottom will be flat. I think that'll look really good coming off of our piece. Now we'll do the same thing to this guy and it's going to get kind of layered like that. So glue here where they're going to touch, then peel the foam backer off, and then put this into place. So now you can see when they lay flat, they'll actually have some dimension there, and I'm even going to pop that up on the wood piece too. So that is now ready to go onto our board. I should say to our plaque, our handmade wood plaque. So here's the plaque brought back over and so this is going to lay kind of in this area here just like that and then I'm going to put some other pretties around it. See these two little doilies I've placed here? These I picked up at Hobby Lobby. They came in a little pack. I got the um, khaki color and kind of a mint green color and I know that mint is not a perfect color but I think it's going to work for what I'm looking for and I want to say this. This is really important. Where I'm putting this plaque in that bathroom, this is a powder room so it doesn't have a shower so there's not going to be steam or anything so kind of like a half bath. If you're going to put this where there's moisture, you're going to need to use like sealer and things because these are paper and they will wrinkle up over time. But since where I'm going to be putting it doesn't have anything but like, you know, a sink, it's not going to be a big deal. So think about that when you're putting this together. You can always do this and put it in another room. This is perfect for like a bedroom or a hallway or somewhere you just want to put some pretties. And I don't want to seal these down all the way. Notice I'm just putting the glue in the center. I want them to kind of just have a little movement and be kind of lifted like that. Then it's time to put this guy into place. I'm going to peel this backer off and I think I'm going to hot glue it on. Give me a second to move it around into place once I get it down. And I'm not going to be shy because I want this to last a long time so I'm putting plenty of hot glue on. These pieces are some more pieces I cut from the paper pad. I cut them using my paper trimmer and now I'm going to go back and do a little bit of fussy cutting on these to make them look like tickets. So I'm cutting that little bit of black out where the little ticket pieces are. So it'll just take me a second to do that. But these pieces are often things that you don't really know how to use from your paper pad. Um, unless you're doing a mini album or you're making like a scrapbook page, they kind of are just kind of things that get left in our paper pads because for cards we don't always use these but I think this is a great way to use them so that's what we're going to do today so now you can see the difference this still has the little black pieces in that were left in the holes and this one I cut the notches out so that's what we're doing here I also cut these strips from the paper I like this that says um, all the little words you are beautiful ooh la la all that good stuff and I'm going to glue it to this piece that looks like lace so I'm going to have them on each other just like this so I'm just going to run some glue down the edge that and then lay this onto that little lacy piece now bringing this guy back over I think this will be pretty kind of go into the side like this and I'm gonna kind of tuck it behind here I'm gonna put something else here so no worries that it's not perfectly tucked but it's gonna kind of lay just like this and I'm gonna hot glue it into place as well so these guys I've just glued together in this kind of fan shape like this and I'm gonna take them and put them kind of in this area use some hot glue for that again then I can kind of lift them up a little bit I may even go back and put some foam tape behind them I don't know I think they're gonna live just fine and then all these buttons which I'm in love with look at all these I'm gonna place these here and there with some hot glue
I love these buttons. These came in, look, these came in this container. It's um, buttons galore. And I'm not sure where it came from. I won this at a card party we had recently. It was a door prize and I love it. Actually, my cousin and I won it and she didn't take it with her, so I'm using it <laughs> because I love them. And I'm just gonna let these buttons kind of almost be like an arrangement, like a flower arrangement, kind of. Just kind of stacking them here and there. Gonna put some on top of them. Have them kind of stacked up. Almost like, like they fell there. This is the fun part when you just play and put things where you want it. I'm looking in the camera to see where I want things too. That's handy to have that. I have these that are kind of sparkly. Um, they're, they're very different. I'm gonna use those as well. I think I'm gonna put them on top of buttons. you get going it's hard to stop <laughs> but I really should I think one right here to hide this area where these meet and we're in business now I do want to try to add this ribbon this this ribbon was actually on that little button um, container and I just think this might be cute if I can make like a little bow and stick somewhere and then one more of these tiny sparkly buttons is gonna go right on top of that and that's it I'm calling that done so with some chipboard, some scrapbook paper, some buttons, and a couple of doilies, we've made a pretty cool wall hanging. I think it's gonna look really good. Now the only other thing I'm gonna do, and I'll do that off camera because it's loud, is I'm gonna go back and hit this with my heat tool to get all those little um, hot glue strings off so that they won't be everywhere. But that's it, it's totally done. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think this wood idea is super fun. And maybe next week I'll be on to something else. Who knows, this week it's been all about the wood, right? Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you do a project where you make some faux wood, I would love to see what you do. Share it with us on my Facebook page, which is called May May Made It, and so did I. Head over and check that out. There's lots of inspiration for you there. Also, if you'd like to check out my store, you can head to maymaymadeit.com. My store, my blog, everything is in one location for you there. You can go check us out. Um, talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.